I don't know if there's a bigger leap for somebody to take than going from that level to the most storied hockey franchise in the world. And his message at the draft was one that really resonated. This is not the end point. This is just the beginning of where it goes for you. And there's a lot of work ahead. Back at the point, Andrew Strathman. Plays that back in deep. And a picked up there by Mikey Virgil. Back to Strathman. Well, the puck knocked away. And back down to the American zone where Virgil picks it up. Plays for Dubuque in the United States Hockey League. And Virgil chips that ahead. We've seen a number of American players make a name for themselves in the tournament over the years. A couple of years ago in Edmondson, Nick Robertson had a strong tournament. Wound up being a second-round pick of Toronto. Now that's picked free and brought up by Kevin Bicker. For Germany to play offside at the German line. You know, Vancouver Canucks, really good scoring forward. Brock Besser made his mark at this tournament. You know, Ryan Paling was the captain of the team that lost in the uh, Holinka Gretzky gold medal game before becoming a first round draft pick of the Montreal Canadiens, just recently traded. And again, back to just Marty St. Louis and, you know, coaching different players at, at youth. You know, Ryan goes to the national team development program. Lucas is going to take a different path. It's not just the end point comes differently for everybody. And there's different paths to get there. And I think that an example here is Lucas, who's going to go his own path, different from his older brother, Ryan. I think, you know, most parents would be proud to have a kid going to Harvard. Yeah, well, I, I don't see why you wouldn't be proud. <laughs> Ted Donato, the head coach, are often jokes that their arch rival isn't Yale. <laughs> It's the admissions department. <laughs> Got to get guys in. Well, Montreal Canadiens draft pick Sean Farrell played in the Olympics, and, you know, he's a real promising player, not only for Harvard, but for the Montreal Canadiens going forward. He played with that great group of old ones, Jack Hughes and Cole Caulfield. So you start to look at a future that's different for different players. John Farrell is certainly a real good prospect moving forward. Tanner Adams plays that out. He'll be 17 in September. And among the many, many NHL executives here, the VP and general manager of the Red Wings, Steve Eiserman, former junior teammate of our Dave Reed in Peterborough. Well, and Steve is, you know, we've seen him at a number of the Holinka Gretzky tournaments. I mean, he he wants to see where these players are at, a, at this point in time. And then over the course of the season, he'll be watching and monitoring along with the scouting staff. Such a good future, looks like, in Detroit. A lot of good young players, but not just young players. Players that look like they could be pillars of the Detroit Red Wings roster in the future, much like Steve Eiserman was during his entire career. Not a bad German player for Detroit as well, and for its side of the rookie of the year, the shot right on, taken by Germany's Florian Ritter, and the first hard stop made by Calvin Bachon. The white ball works in, he's turned away by Turkey, because things open up here, and now the puck stole away by white law. Made him with Rosemount, Minnesota, works back in, puck loose in front, first it down, and no goal, McGuaw thought he poked that home. But the referee right away waves it off and says no goal. Early in this game, Will Whitelaw has really demonstrated some quickness, attacking into the middle of the ice, and then on this particular play, taking it right to the net. You know, a lot of times where you can circle behind the net, but Whitelaw decides, no, I'm coming to the front of the net. And that's not an easy play for young players to make. And Whitelaw makes no hesitation, the great edge work in coming to the front of the net. And you can see the net pops up, and that's why the referee waved his arms as no goal as it comes up under the side. Referee Brendan Schreider waves that off right away. Now, there is video review here in this tournament. That was a sore spot for Team USA at the tournament in 2019, I want to say, in Edmonton. Uh, when you would say, I would say definitely. A late <laughs> goal that should not have counted came after the horn had sounded. Dylan Cousins, yeah. you were talking about the Buffalo Sabres and the outs at the beginning of the broadcast, and Dylan Cousins. So here's the play as it comes around, and you can see where White Law is trying to. What's it? They're trying to, that is, and the net came up after. 
Well, when the horn sounds, that's usually an indication that they've had a good look at it, and it should count as a goal. And there it is, yeah. clearly in the net. And this will be a one nothing lead for USA. So the only thing we didn't talk about, Will Whitelaw, on that play is that he finished the play for right. the goal. He was the first overall pick in the United States Hockey League draft. He's had to go to the University of Wisconsin in a couple of years as we see Anthony Noreen on the USA bench. A lot of experience coaching USA national teams. World Junior A Challenge. And they're still chatting it over, but there are no coaches challenges here. But there is video review, and here is the call, and it's a goal for Team USA. So they get the opening goal five minutes and seven seconds in. And that'll be Will Whitelaw who gets credit for it. Yeah, delay celebration, but a celebration nonetheless. And here's Whitelaw again. And, and the edge work and then just maneuvering the puck onto his forehand as he's moving laterally in front of the net. And then he just sneaks it in past the left pad of the goaltender and inside the post. So the U.S. with the early lead as Lucas St. Louis brings it out. Fired back down to the German zone. Back in the corner, picked up by Erdman. But the Erdman plays for the Long Island Gulls. And it was Wilmington, Delaware. And back to pick it up is Michael Hagan. The pass picked up a little bit by Joe Connor. His centering pass for Erdman. Loose puck in front. Hagan for a chance. And the save is made in tight by Pertuk. Lucas St. Louis makes a great play. First of all, he gets himself in great position to get the reverse. And then quickly as he moves up the ice, he says, i got to get this puck into the hands. And this is how the scoring chance ensues, all because of just really strong understanding to get into the position to get the puck defensive zone and then move it up the ice quickly. His older brother Ryan is a forward. We know how great Marty was. His father was as a forward. And Lucas... As all those intelligent qualities you want to see in a defenseman. Gavin McCarthy plays it back aggressive. Going to BU in 2023, where his brother is now. Older brother Case was drafted by the Islanders. And now McCarthy swings back for it. Played for Muskegon in the United States Hockey League this year. You mentioned another one of the Buffalo Junior Sabres. He acquitted himself quite well as a 16-year-old in that league. Centering pass knocked away as Andrew Kuzma came in. Out of the corner comes Cooper Pearson. And Pearson sent flying. And the puck goes back to Mikey Burchill. Back at the point. Kuzma, long shot. And Pertzik steers out of way. Shots is 5-1 to one in favor of Team USA. Here in the early going. And Zach Sharp goes back to pick it up. Most of the American players have committed to colleges already. Aside from those who are playing major junior hockey. But a number are still looking for colleges to take them. As Musty works in. Quentin Musty. Slides that back down. It's intercepted by Rafael Yakovlev. And he plays it back to center ice. Robin Ricci plays that back in. Tanner Adams. Rink wide pass to Musty. Little centering pass score. Musty centers it. And the puck is tapped home for Team USA's second goal of the game. And that's Will McDonough, I believe. It goes Sharp who got the goal. Check that. It's Terry Terrence. Such a fantastic play by Kerry Terrence. He recognizes in the neutral zone that he has a clear path to the net, and he jumps into that spot perfectly, and Quentin Musty gives it to him. 
right in stride, right where he has a lot of time to do something with the puck and ends up a little bit on end. But the good puck skills and the finishing ability of Terrence gives the USA a 2 nothing lead. Two goals in two minutes and two eight, two minutes and 18 seconds. Terrence plays for Erie in the Ontario Hockey League. Actually played minor hockey in Toronto for the Toronto Titans, so has a background there. He's from Aquasani, New York. So an OHL connection there. Musty of Sudbury to Terrence of Erie. And a sweet feed for Musty sets that up. In comes Whitelaw back with it. Whitelaw will open the scoring center. Is it that puck knocked away by Noah Szymanski? Szymanski, like a lot of these German players, plays for the Red Bull Academy in Salzburg, Austria. That's a pipeline for German players. Most of them who are property of Munich. Munich sends a lot of its young players there, and Red Bull owns the Munich team. You know, you talked about Moritz Seider. We know what a great player Leon Dreisaitl is. You know, we see Tim Stutzle with the Ottawa Senators. But, you know, you're seeing German hockey now take steps forward. And, you know, playing in these tournaments against high-end competition is really important for the development. I know being at the U18 in Landshut and Cockburn this previous April, here comes Connor Brown with a shot. The Germans are really excited about playing in these tournaments against the competition because they feel it will only help their players understand what it takes to get better. Bergman picked that off. And now played away by Jonas Fischer. In comes Erdman, drops it back, and Brown with a quick shot. And the stop made there by Pertzik. Connor Brown, not to be confused with the Washington Capitals, Connor Brown, or the Connor Brown who plays in the United States Hockey League. <laughs> Connor has become a very popular name. Connor Brown's a bow. Yes. A bank back down the ice. An icing call against the Team USA. So we're going to take a look at the second USA goal here, scored by Terrence. Did that go in? Did that cross the line? Yeah, it's. I think that's far and out, isn't it? Well, it looks like far post, and then here it comes. And there's the bar, but did it end up? I don't think it did. I think it's post, cross, bar, and out. Whoops. Ball is up. Well, let's put it this way. It's not definitive that it went in <laughs> from our angles. <laughs> but they were quick to blow the horn on the first goal to yeah. say, hey, listen, you know what? We looked at it. Now McDonough in shoots. That's blocked away. And now McCarthy with a shot that was blocked in front. Gavin McCarthy back with it. Swings back for Team USA. Look back to center ice. Here's Pearson flipping it back down in the German zone. For, for teams with smaller player pools, tournaments like this are very difficult. Obviously, the World Championship, you have players from age 18 up to 35. The World Junior would be 16 to 19, but this is just for 2005 and 2006 birthdays. This is a really tight event in terms of the player window, and so for countries with smaller player pools, much harder to get a competitive team. But Germany has a plan, and it's coming along. Power play 2026, it was called. The idea of being competitive for medals at every level by 26. Long shot taken by Zach Sharp. Get away by Persian. Well, the German League, the DEL, is also doing a really good job with respect to, you know, providing opportunities for the German-born players to play. And, to, and for those players to see that there is opportunity to advance their game. That's just as important in development as playing in these tournaments. Musty lays it back to Terrence. And that's kicked free and moved up by Mayer. And now streaking in is Schreiner. Schreiner in, shoots, bash on, save, rebound. And Batten Schreiner couldn't quite reach it. Kept alive by Norman Panoka. That's knocked down. 
Another chance that time for Florian Renner. And the save is made by Vachon. 2-0 the U.S. leads on the opening day of the Holinka Gretzky Cup. Welcome to the Subway Eat Fresh Refresh. We got it. Cut. Introducing the new Green Goddess sandwiches. Topped with this delicious new Green Goddess dressing. Ooh, angry. Cut. Subway Eat Fresh Refresh. When pain says you can't, Fight it two ways with new Advil Plus Acetaminophen. Ibuprofen targets pain. Acetaminophen blocks pain signals. New Advil Plus Acetaminophen fights pain for up to eight hours. What is it about this game? Why does it capture us so completely? It is glorious, maddening, humbling, and redeeming. So if it calls you, if you would do anything to get just a little better, we know exactly how you feel. Whether it's preparing for competition or manufacturing the finest automotive protection products, you can be sure to find the same dedication to innovation, precision, and performance that we deliver on the racetrack in everything we produce. For a perfect fit and the ultimate in protection, order online at weathertech.ca. Well, we've had some looks at the second goal, and Gary Terrence, who was credited with it, comes in, and we can see how he gets it up under the bar, and it was reviewed, and they said it was in, but if you watch Gary Terrence's <laughs> reaction here, like, oh, after man. he scores, he's not convinced that the puck went in, but... He looks at the referee and sees, okay, oh, goal, okay, I guess I should celebrate. Not going to say no. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> Goals are hard to come by, Gord. Face off one back of that point shot taken there by Germany's Paul Lemke. Broke your stick on the plane, now Musty back the other way with Adams and Terrence. Bouncing part to Bahoff. He lost the handle. And then Bahoff falls in the corner. Now Musty back with it. Quentin Musty. Slides that back at the point for Kinsman. Across he goes. That long shot taken by Joe Brammer. Steered away. Rebound up the other side for Adams. Down to Musty. That pass picked off and moved up by Jonas Fischer. A number of these German players play for multiple teams over the course of the year. They'll play for a, a junior, an under-18, under-17 team, all in the same season. Not uncommon in Europe. No, it isn't. You know, and, you know, give them a taste of what the next level looks like. See how they can take it back to the level where they had some success and keep building. Adams took the puck by Linus Brandl, and now brought up by Kevin Bicker. You mentioned the German program. The Smith works in along with Musty, the centering pass for Musty just tipped away from him. Now Ryan Smith back on it. And it's brought out now by Remus Brandle. Ooh, look out at center ice with Quah had in line. That'd be stepped around that check. As the bouncing cut goes to Vashon, it's skipped away from him. But the German Federation awards points to all the DEL teams and allows them funding based on those points. The cross plays the cross, white loss, geared away by Pertu. Excellent sight by Pertu. He had to move across there and get the blocker on. Fantastic goaltending. Offside call to the German line. It's a 2 0 CBSA lead. Almost three on day one of the 2022 Holinka Gretzky under 18 tournament here in Red Deer. Give it to me. What, what do you think? Flow. We need more movement. Whatever the choice, just keep it smart. When a normal day is anything but normal, we fit your schedule with our unique tub over tub process installed in as little as a day. Bath Fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. 
Exposure to asbestos is the main cause of work-related deaths in Canada. But most people don't know compensation is available to them. Miskin Law is the leading law firm in Canada dedicated to mesothelioma victims. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with this deadly cancer, get in touch with us today. We start from a position of compassion. We want you to know that you do have options. Call Miskin Law today. The Axe Effect. Every day DQ is open for happy. Yeah, that's the move. Incoming! I didn't like that before. Like, it was just like, yeah, it's really good. You never can tell where happiness will find you. <laughs> or can you? DQ. Happy tastes good. Will White Law into the Rosemount, Minnesota, one of the top point getters in a single season in the history of Shattuck St. Mary's, which is an elite prep school in Fairmont, Minnesota. Now, cracking the top couple, Zach Parisi is two of the best three scoring seasons, Sidney Crosby another. So, and you're the top 15 for that school. <laughs> you're in good company. I mean, that goes without saying. I think Vincent LeCavier went there too, didn't he? No. Oh, no, he went to Notre Dame. Right? Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. That's correct. Right. Yep. And then Brad Richards. Brad Richards, that's right. His old running mate. It was a pretty good duo. <laughs> Gavin McCarthy picks that free for Team USA, who, by the way, are wearing my favorite Team USA uniform. This is a fantastic. The 1980 version. Yeah. And they won the gold medal, Olympic gold medal in Lake Placid. Chopped down the line and kept alive by Andrew Strathman, who plays for Anthony Noreen with Tri-City of the United States Hockey League. And now the puck skipping in front of the American bench and plays called. And you mentioned... Not just Lake Placid, I believe these are also the uniforms or a version of the award 1960 and a gold medal winning year. All the teams are here in Red Deer in this building. Look at what the Team USA dressing room looked like prior to the players' arrival. This is the home of the Red Deer Rebels of the Western Hockey League. It was also the host arena for the 1995 World Junior Championship where Canada won a gold medal and was a host for the abbreviated 22, 2022 World Junior, which will resume next week in Edmonton. That pass was fired at center ice for Becky Virgil, and I see called against Team USA. Well, when you think about Red Deer and Brent Sutter, two-time Stanley Cup champion, the wonderful partner and wife, Connie, and their son, Merrick. I mean, they just do such... They don't just do fantastic work with the Red Deer Rebels. They do fantastic work in the community. Great supporters of international hockey. Nicely continue to renovate the building here, Gord. It's just the scoreboard is fantastic. We have a good team here this year, apparently. You know how it goes. Everybody has high hopes and, yeah. and beliefs, but you now having... Watched quite a bit of the Western Hockey League last year. I think that, by all accounts, the Red Deer Rebels will have a good team. They should have a good team. A lot of good returning players. Look at Kinzel brings that in for Germany. Knocked away from him. Steve Konowalczak, a yeah. USA born player. Good long NHL career as the coach here in Red Deer. Oh, Salt Lake City is there. Oh, that's come right on. The save made by Pertzit. And now Sharp chops back at it. Zach Sharp has to go off the stick. Up and out of play. You're watching the opening day of the 2022 Olympic Gretzky Cup.
bubbles, bubbles, so many bubbles. As an Expedia member, you earn points on your travels, and that's on top of your airline miles. So you can go and see, or taste, or do absolutely nothing with all those bubbles. Without ever wondering if you're getting the most out of your trip. Because you are. Throughout history, I've observed markets shaped by the intentional and unforeseeable. For investors who can navigate this landscape, leveraging gold, a strategic and sustainable asset, the path is gilded with the potential for rich returns. It's cold, your blood gets thin <laughs> down the desert. <laughs> For Vegas. And all kinds of question marks for the year ahead. New coach, I think Bruce Cassidy uh, fit in really nicely there. You look at what he did with the Boston Bruins after taking over for a top notch coach in Paul Julian. I think Bruce has the same chance to help a team with high expectations go to a higher level. In comes Musty again, but this time Quentin Musty's offside and Musty a little chop there at Paul Meyer. You know, it's interesting, Gordon. We, 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 as we go around the NHL and the salary cap has big implications, you know, what's happened with the pandemic and, you know, the salary cap being suppressed down. But, like, you know, the Vegas Gold Knights, from the day they entered the league, they've been a, a real top team. And people, it's easy to criticize a lot of different areas of, of an organization. But when you're committed to winning, you know what? It, that's what professional sport is about. And I think that the Vegas Gold Knights have demonstrated that their commitment has produced a lot of good results and they certainly have an opportunity to do it again. In comes White Law with a chance and the save made point blank. And again, a little weak, late whack there from A.J. Lacroix, but Nico Pertuk has it. So there he is overseeing matters, former general manager of the longtime GM of the Washington Capitals. He not only looks like he's got like a down coat on, he looks like he's got a sweater underneath. Yeah, he's... I wonder if he's wearing long underwear. Like, the, you talk about the... Not the, that cold, the, not that cold there. That's, that's really the blood thinning out down in Vegas. He's from Gulf, Ontario. <laughs> Here's Fratham with it. And a long lead pass from Higgins. Run by Wyla, his centering pass for Lacroix goes off a skate and brought up by Norwin Pinocchio. Craftsman back for it. And the USHL all rookie team playing for Tri City. Craftsman will be going to the University of North Dakota in a couple of years. Another steal at center ice by Jeremy, this time by Noah Samansky. And that forces Craftsman back. Ice conditions will be a question mark for this tournament on very hot days here in Red Deer and three games a day in this building. In fact, on Wednesday, there'll be four games, or Friday, Friday there'll be four games here. And the puck squirts back in front, Vanshaw able to hang on to that long enough to get a whistle as Noah Szymanski was lurking dangerously. But Gord, we've seen, you know, doing this tournament over in Czechia and, Slo and Slovakia, when it's over in Europe, that, you know, the, the hot weather, the humidity, you know, affects ice conditions. I mean, right. it's one of those things where this is the reality of it. And, you know, I think you, you you were discussing that they might be doing just a dry scrape at different points to try to keep the integrity of the ice as high as possible. Well, you, saw, you and I saw it in the 2018 tournament in Bretzlav when they... Steamy conditions outside, but the steamy conditions indoors. 
Now brought ahead by Griffin Erdman. In comes Erdman, a centering pass, and point blank, Connor Brown steered away by Perzik. Another late whack by Team USA, but Nico Perzik has played well so far for Germany. Yeah, and again, we saw on the goal, second goal by Terry Terrence, right through the middle of the ice. This is exactly where Connor Brown, he comes right through the middle of the ice and in stride gets the puck. He's got enough room to be able to make a play. It's delivered perfectly on the stick of the streaking Connor Brown and Pertuk again with a real solid save. Herman back in front, flips that wide. And pick three by Kevin Picker. Back to center ice he goes to Timo Rukdashel. Rukdashel has that knocked away. So mentioned the German program, they give points to teams based on the number of young players in the lineup, how many academies they have, coaching clinics they run, and the more points you have, the more funding you get from the German Federation. Well, and it's a funding model based on development, not just on right. outcomes. Meyer, up the center ice, with a place offside at the American line. Well, as you pointed out earlier, Gordon, if, if funding's going to be based on just successful team accomplishments as you're trying to develop, they don't always intersect, and it doesn't right. always lead to what you're trying to accomplish. And you talked about, you know, their goal by 2026 to be competitive at all levels in hockey to compete for medals. Development becomes... Jakovlev works in and pass back in front, just with Julius Sunk. Back at the point, a long wrist shot taken by Lars Bosiker, goes off the leg and wide. And just the thing, development becomes a primary focus. In comes Pearson with it. Pearson gets loose and shoots. Another good stop by Pertu. Well, for a long time, the German league was a haven for foreign players that try to cut down the number of imports that play in that league. But Nico Pertu, who plays for the Landshut organization, is having a pretty strong afternoon so far. Well, that's not an easy save. I mean, you're moving right to left, and then the shot comes back to where you're moving from, and he kicks out that right pad, makes a really nice save to deny the U.S. from going up 3-0. San Luis works in. Trying to kick that three and dust for Adams. Trying to find Musti. And quickly Pertu grabs that. So this tournament, like so many others, has faced disruptions in recent years due to the global pandemic. But here's a look at some of the recent champions. Russia in 2021. There was no tournament in 2020. Russians won in 2019 as well. Russia and Belarus are both ineligible to compete in IHF events. This is not officially an IHF event, but they are barred from international play through the invasion of Ukraine. And Slovakia finished second last year yeah. in the tournament, which is a really significant achievement. They've been relegated down to Division Two in the U18 tournament. They've made their way back up again, but, you know, they, we saw Yuri Slavkovsky and Simon Nemitz get drafted one and two. Philip Mazar get drafted in the first round as well by the Montreal Canadiens. There are some really good young Slovak players making their way. Slovaks will play the Swedes in the opener tomorrow. Later tonight, we've got Canada against Switzerland. We'll see a good one tomorrow, Gord. Andre, Andre Molnar is a good player. He played in the yeah. Slovak Extra Liga, which is the not only a fun in here. In the final minute of the opening period, we'll get our first penalty of the game. They'll go to Team Germany. It's a trip on Timo Rukdaschel. A little quick turn there by Lucas St. Louis. Trying to escape the pressure. And Rukdaschel with his stick in on the legs. And that'll get you two for tripping. The first power play goes to Team USA with 58 seconds to go in the first period. Face off not done fairly. The Centerman's Kerry Terrace. Mm -hmm. 
Musty and Adams are the forwards. Two D men on this American power play. San Luis down to Musty. Back for San Luis. That'll be centers it bounces back off a stick, and San Luis got to gather it back up. Musty back down to San Luis. San Luis gains center ice, moves it across the line. 30 seconds to go in the opening period. That pass from McCarthy misfired. Chopped up by Lars Bosiker. Bosiker, a late birthday in 2005, so not eligible for the draft until 2024. Musket works in and holds. Centering pass just missed McCarthy. Played back around by Terrence. And here's San Luis back on it. Back across to McCarthy, final seconds now of the period. Centering pass for Adams, just misfired. St. Louis gets a shot away at the horn. It trickles wide. TBSA will have a minute and two seconds of power play time to carry over into the second period. A 2-0 lead after the opening 20 minutes of play. See a pretty good opportunity. There's the play at the top of your corner, undercutting up at the top, McCarthy. So he catches him with hip and doesn't really get him with a blow on the knee, which is fortunate for McCarthy. Coming up, it's our first intermission. You're watching game two on day one of the 2022 Alinka Gretzky under 18 tournament. sitting there thinking about quitting don't because today we are not afraid of growth we are built to do hard things i want you to feel alive today <laughs> you are a plate of fajitas at a packed restaurant turning heads sizzle baby sizzle keep sizzling great things take time you are tougher peloton motivation that moves you when pain says you can't, fight it two ways with new Advil Plus Acetaminophen. Ibuprofen targets pain. Acetaminophen blocks pain signals. New Advil Plus Acetaminophen fights pain for up to eight hours. This is not a basketball net. This is not a drill. And this is not a stand mixer. It's how the Harpers turn downtime into together time. And this is not just any loyalty program. It's one made for them. With Triangle Rewards, you get personalized offers every week so you can get more of what you love. Download the Triangle app today. Throughout history, I've observed markets shaped by the intentional and unforeseeable. For investors who can navigate this landscape, leveraging gold, a strategic and sustainable asset. The path is gilded with the potential for rich returns. In a game where every inch counts, Titleist unlocks your best iron play. T-Series irons, precise in every dimension. A great start to the 2022 Holinka Gretzky Cup for Team USA, scoring both goals in that first period. Will Whitelaw got the party started. Here he is with board. Well, Will, an eventful first period for your team. Obviously, you guys don't know each other well. How hard has it been to get some cohesion together so fast? Yeah, so it's been good. Like, we've been together for a couple of days, and it's all about just hanging around together as a team and uh, 
getting to know each other better. It's easier when we know each other better and we trust each other, so we know we're all going to work hard and get to work when we're on the ice together. You had a monster year at Shattuck, which is an elite program in the United States. How do you view the coming year from your perspective? Yeah, so Shattuck's obviously a great place to play, and it's been a huge part of my development. And I thought it was just the right thing for me if I want to have a good year this year to go back. And I think it's going to help me in monstrous ways for getting ready for the USHL and playing for Youngstown. Thanks, Will. Thank you. We are at the intermission. Laura and Dave back with you. We just heard from Will Whitelaw. Well, let's take a look at his goal once again, where video review comes out in favor of Team USA. It sure does. 46 goals in 55 games at Shattuck St. Mary's this past season for Will Whitelaw. And you can see why. He got the puck consistently in the first period and drove it hard to the net. And that's how he scores the first goal. Great job. Turnover in the, in the, in the offensive zone. And he just decides to keep the puck take to the net. And this is a power move. We don't see it a lot from young players. This is a move that a lot of mature players don't like to make, but at, six, at 17 years old, he drives the front of the net, puts it in, and it was reviewed. It, it slid into the far side, but that's just a great power move by a player who is very comfortable taking the puck hard to the net, very comfortable scoring goals, and it's expected in this tournament that Wailau is going to probably be the top scorer for the U.S. because he showed over the course of the last, this past season at Shattuck St. Mary's that offense is his game, and he started off for the U.S. Okay, so two minutes and 18 seconds after that, the U.S. able to make it 2 nothing. But again, we take a look back at this one and video review helping out the U.S. in another way because Germany kicking itself a little bit there that they didn't call to take a closer look at this one. Yeah, this isn't a tournament where you've got all the uh, the, the resources by all the teams and extra coaches downstairs looking at videos. So the first goal was re video reviewed and it was an easy call. This one, beautiful pass. It's when Musty throws it across to Kerry Terrence, who does a great job of quickly taking a backhand forehand. But by looking at it, it looks like it goes post crossbar and then does not cross the line. I mean, it's a fantastic job just to get this puck up. But from the views we saw and you see here, it didn't cross the line. It didn't really matter. It was called a goal on the ice. And because the, 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 the Germany didn't dispute it, didn't ask for a video replay, there was no video replay. And from there, it's 2 nothing USA. But some great puck movement by the U.S. Obviously, the dominant team, the, the, the deeper team skill-wise. And they got a little bit lucky on that second goal. Both goals. Could have been video re reviewed, but uh, good for Germany. They're, they're staying in this. There are two CHL players on Team USA. Musty contributing there. Terrence contributing there, obviously scoring the goal. So props to Erie and Sudbury, a couple of OHL teams. Happy to see their players contributing. Well, speaking of the CHL, speaking of Canadian hockey, Canada in action still to come here on the opening day of the Holinka Gretzky Cup. Up next, Craig Button will tell us the top Canadian players you should be keeping an eye on at this year's tournament. So, are you excited? I am, but I'm a little nervous. This feels like a big change. It's not. I have one. People act like they're so hard to take care of or whatever, but it's totally a piece of cake. Well, that's good to hear. See how easy that is? I hope being a mom is that easy. <laughs> it's not. Bye now. Going electric just got easier. Chevrolet will cover standard installation of a charging outlet with Charge by Chevrolet. Electric, now for everyone. Find new roads. Oh, can you pick up my Viagra? Remember, ask for Viagra. It's virtually the same price as the generic, and I want branded Viagra. And let me drink a cream. Viagra. You know the name. Ask for it. Kids, one year they want all dinosaur stuff. The next, camels. Llamas. Llamas. So save money shopping back to school on Amazon. You sure that's not a camel? Yep. Whatever you say. Give it to me. What, what do you think? Flow. We need more movement. Whatever the choice, just keep it smart. If you're sitting there thinking about quitting, don't. Because today, we are not afraid of growth. We are built to do hard things. I want you to feel alive today. You are a plate of fajitas at a packed restaurant turning heads. Sizzle, baby! Sizzle! Keep sizzling. Great things take time. You are tougher. Peloton. Motivation that moves you. Let's go give it to you. Effect. When you 
play the Game of Thrones, you win. Or you die. There's only one war that matters, and it is here. Zachary Benson, a creative, imaginative player that is so elusive and yet dangerous at the same time, understands how to get in to difficult areas, how to take advantage of opportunities. And they're not single opportunities, they're multiple opportunities. His brilliance with the puck and his poise and patience make no mistake about it he's always looking to exploit an opportunity and more times than not he's able to take advantage cameron allen a defenseman who can take advantage and play in every single area of the game with the puck without the puck offensively defensively that type of a player is so valuable to a team and when you watch cameron play on the blue line there's no area of the game he doesn't excel the skating, the passing, the shot, the thinking, the competitiveness. A right shot defenseman. Everybody is looking for somebody that can take control of the game. It's exactly what Cameron Allen does. Braden Yeager, the CHL Rookie of the Year last season. And a player that likes to model his game after Nathan McKinnon. And when you can skate like Braden Yeager, and you have a drive like Braden Yeager, and the skills that Braden Yeager possesses, you can model your game after Nathan McKinnon. Because there's certainly all those elements that are in place. And when Braden is on the power play, when he has offensive opportunities, he knows, can I shoot? Can I pass? He makes all the right decisions, and he makes a big impact in the game. Big Callum Ritchie, a center who can drive the game forward with an attacking, skilled approach. Make no mistake about it, he can skate past you, he can stick handle past you, and he can power past you. The big, strong player from the Oshawa Generals has the ability to really break down opponents and to take advantage of the slightest of openings. And where there is no opening, he creates one for himself. A supremely talented, powerful forward. Riley Height, a centerman with the Prince George Cougars, who I would describe as complete. Maybe not one of those players that's going to be excelling in one single area of the game, but there's not one area of the game you can't have him out on the ice where he's not going to make a difference. Competitively, he's into every fight, every puck battle. Defensively, he understands how to take advantage. So as a coach, you can have him play penalty kill, but he's very good offensively, so you have him on the power play. Young player that understands as a center iceman, you can control the game in critical areas. It's exactly what Riley Height is capable of doing. And you can't forget about Ethan Gauthier, the son of former Calgary Flame and first-round draft pick Denny Gauthier. Ethan is a superb two-way centerman. Maybe not the flashiest of players, but wherever you see a good play happening, whether it be in the offensive zone, whether it be creating a goal, whether it be scoring a goal, whether it be penalty killing, whether it be breaking up uh, offensive opportunities from the opponent, Ethan Gauthier is in it to win it. He's involved in all the battles, all the important areas of the game. And as a first overall pick in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, he certainly can follow in his father's footsteps and be a first-round pick in the upcoming NHL draft. So there was Craig Button's take on who you should be watching when it comes to Team Canada. Canada and Switzerland set to kick off its Holinka Gretzky Cup later tonight. Our action starts at 9 Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific before another trio of games coming your way tomorrow. Well, earlier in the day, it was Czechia and Finland meeting in the opening game of this year's tournament. Finland with the lead with just over 30 seconds left in regulation. But Jakob Stansel ties this game up. 
And this one was decided in a shootout, and it was a wild shootout. Six goals scored through the first ten shooters. Emil Yarventi's goal prompts Czechia to pull its goaltender. Yes, Michael Rabel played the whole game, but in comes Adam Dybel, ice cold. First person he faces, Aaron Kivaharu, and Dybel makes the save, and then it's Edward Saleh winning it for Czechia. And the bench happy with the results as the Czechs win their first game of this tournament and a shootout like we haven't really seen before as you saw on that schedule Finland will take on the US tomorrow while the Czechs back in action again will be taking on this German team in day two at the Holinka Gretzky Cup well the US with the 2 nothing lead after the first period of play they'll be looking to add to that lead here in the second the US will start the period on the man advantage Slaming Clear 2.0. We're here for those who don't just do things. We're going to make them 2.0. Crisp, light tasting, Slaming Clear 2.0 has 80 calories and 2 grams of carbs. Why not make it 2.0? Hey, 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 how you doing, baby? who idle than those who never seem to stop. They can't. They have to keep moving. Refusing to rest. Reimagining what's possible. Getting it done. That's what we did when we redesigned the GMC terrain. And those are the people we did it for. Steer into summer with the GMC terrain AT4 and Elevation. Finance at 2.99% for up to 60 months. Order by August 2nd, 2022. At Schneider's, we care about making hand-tied, carefully crafted sausage. We care about mixing specially selected, perfectly balanced spices. We care about using smoke from natural hardwood in traditional smokehouses. We care about following 132 years of tradition. Because you care about what you bring to the table. Schneider's, Canadian crafted since 1890. So, I'm a beachside hotel. Uh, as you can see, I'm pretty relaxed. Uh, I don't mean to brag, but I do have multiple pools. I'm looking for someone who likes sand and sun. Uh, active types are cool. I know a lot of fun spots. Uh, if you have kids, great. I'm great with kids. And, uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, beachside hotel. The start of the new era in Canadian professional golf kicks off this season with the inaugural Fortinet Cup on PGA Tour Canada. The race for the Fortinet Cup spans from coast to coast as the top up-and-coming golfers in the world compete for the coveted trophy. Next week on PGA Tour Canada, the Quebec Open takes place at Le Blanc Villiers Golf Club in Blainville, Quebec. For more details, visit PGATour.com slash Fortinet Cup. Still to come here today in Red Deer, it is game three of the day. Canada makes its tournament debut against Switzerland. Nine o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Mountain here on TSN. Here's your scoring summary for the first period. And the Germans are like an eraser for the second goal by Kerry Terrence. The puck didn't appear to go in the net, but Will Whitelaw's goal did. And Team USA with an edging shot, 17 to 6. A 2-0 lead after one. We're going to look back here with Craig Button. When you have one of the best scoring seasons in the history of one of the most elite prep schools in the United States, which Will Whitelaw did at Chattanooga St. Mary's, you've made an impact on the game. Well, there's no question about it. And don't take the scoring summary with a stat line or my word for it. We're going to show you how good he is. This is how he does it. The ability to attack to the net. The ability to ensure that I am not going to be outside the guts of the action. I'm going to dive right into where it matters. And then he has a little bit of ability to beat people one-on-one. -on -one. And the ability to change speed in stride is really significant. And get yourself open. That was a great save by Pertuk. And then how do you like this for a little bit of eye-hand coordination? And Will Whitelaw had a big bite of this first period, including scoring the first goal. And if there's any indication of what we saw, it's not going to be his only goal this tournament. 
So the USA will begin the second period on the power play. A minute and two seconds ago on the penalty to Timo Ruckdaschel. And the Germans play it right back down in the American zone. And now brought out by Andrew Strathman from Beach Park, Illinois. And dashing in once again is Whitelaw. This is the side of the goal and trying to clear it out is Meyer. And now Whitelaw keeps it alive. Strathman works it back across to Lacroix. A little back pass to Strathman. Back to Whitelaw with a quick shot. The puck loose in the pads. Got a chance to score. On the rebound in front, Joe Connor. Tucks that home and Team USA with a power play goal has a 3 0 lead. So Will Whitelaw, he wins a battle on the boards. And then the puck ends up coming back to him and he's got a live, live shot. So his ability to get this shot on the net and force Pertuch to do a really good save. Pertuch never finds it. Joe Connor does. Makes that a really, really Nice opportunity. You got to find the puck in front of the net. You got to hunt pucks. Joe Connor does exactly that off the live shot from Will Whitelaw. Joe Connor plays for Avon Old Farms, another elite prep school in Connecticut. Hall of Famer Brian Leach yeah. played at Avon Old Farms, just to name but one NH, former NHL player that is at Avon Old Farms. Jonathan Quick, yeah. two time Stanley Cup champion. Penalty coming out of Germany once again as in comes Musty with it. Nifty pass rink wide. Adams drops it back to St. Louis. Back in for Musty. Here's Terrence with it. Musty drops it back. St. Louis winds his way and shoots. Richard that wide. McCarthy holds the line for Team USA. Musty leaves it there for St. Louis. Back into Musty. And St. Louis at center ice. So six skaters on five for Team USA here with the delayed penalty coming to Germany. This tournament played under IHF rules. Offside will be the call against Team USA, but the Germans will be shorthanded again as Robin Ricci goes off. The only German who plays in North America plays at the Kent School. <laughs> There's the trip right off the faceoff after USA had scored a power play goal. Now one of those effort plays, you're trying to get in there, you're trying to contest the puck and you end up getting your stick in the legs and the player goes down. 50 pass across to Musty as McCarthy got that to him. And the two former Buffalo Junior Sabres connect there as McCarthy takes that pass from San Luis. Cross as Musty takes the pass and shoots. Another great pass that time from Terrence. This American power play unit throws the puck around here. Musty drops it back to McCarthy. Here's McCarthy back to San Luis. Drops that back to Schreiner. And the Germans able to clear it out. San Luis drops it back to Terrence. Terrence comes streaking in. Killian Kudenhau just took him with the puck, but the Americans keep it alive for the moment. Finally, Strathman will knock that down and keep it alive. So the Germans have two chances to clear this out. Now Lacroix has a bounce off his stick and back down to the American zone. And part of development playing at this level is realizing how quickly things progress. And you know, clearing the puck, you might think you're doing it, all of a sudden somebody's on you, and now you've got a whole host of new problems to deal with, and that's part of learning, playing at a higher level. Whitelaw held the line for a moment, the pass picked off by Yucca Poiker, and sent back down to the U.S. zone. 30 seconds to go in Team USA's second power play of the game, the Americans scored in their first. I'm still here, I'm still here. Okay! In comes Whitelaw again, the centering pass goes off a skate. So Musty and Whitelaw are the two American players have had the biggest impact on the game so far. Here we go. So that back in front, a short-handed chance there for Rafael Yakovlev of Germany. In comes Lacroix with it. A.J. Lacroix who plays for Chilliwack in the B.C. Junior League. Moves that in, but the play's offside. As the German penalty expires, the teams are back to five on five. 
Well, Nico Pertzik has been outstanding in this game. It's 3 nothing for Team USA. It could easily be 6 or 7. He has had to make really hard saves mm. time and time again. And not ones where you just face the play straight up, where you got to move, you got to pick up the play, you got to recognize where the opportunity may be coming at you. He has been really strong for Germany in the net. Meyer trying to clear that up, but once again, 